Morning everybody and this morning myself and Jones here have got something very interesting to show you. This black box apparently is an aircraft fuel flow uh, signal conditioner. As you can see it's quite vintage and the plan is, is to uh, do a quick teardown. I uh, found it in the junk box uh, a few weeks ago and I thought quite interesting to do a teardown video. So we'll have a look at it and see you inside and maybe perhaps even get it to work. Right so here's the actual um, unit itself and this is like a piece of avionics which has obviously come out of a um, quite an early aircraft by the look of it. Um, so, one assumes this is probably 1950s or 60s technology. Um, Taking the take the back off it and we'll have a look inside. So it's clearly got it's clearly all uh, valve technology, and uh, something like this um, <clears throat> would probably be from the number in in the avionics bay of uh, uh, an aircraft. Um, with loads of other stuff as well, I presume. So uh, it's got this label on it, and it's from Rolls Royce Hucknall Aerodrome near Nottingham. Mm, interesting. And uh, this is a um, serviceable um, piece of equipment. Uh, they've got the uh, um, repairable uh, crossed out, so it's actually serviceable. And it says for fuel flow uh, meter amplifier. So it's obviously some sort of signal conditioning. And it's quite interesting when you think about it that you know these days a box like this would probably be on a single chip. But um, anyway, this is what they used to use, and it's a uh, pretty solid construction. This is actually steel, I think. I don't know, it might be aluminium. And you've got lots of um, air vents there for the um, obviously valves are going to get quite warm, so it has to be kept quite cool. Um, so we've got some writing on here: MOD uh, 6 10 1965, just a few months before I was born. Um, so it is quite old. Um, 110 128 um, pounds, 150 pounds per minute. I presume that relates to the. Uh, um, the actual um, thing that it's supposed to do, because it's, as I said, it's a fuel flow meter. If you look at the front, so obviously this thing's designed to pull out. A couple of plug-in connectors here, um, 115 volts, 400 hertz, 28 volts DC. Um, this one here's the indicator, and here we've got the transmitter uh, for the fuel flow uh, transmitter from the aircraft. Um, now, fuel flow transmitters generally on aircraft they they fall into um, <clears throat> different sorts. But on the early ones, they were simply um, a magnet with a vane. So the fuel would enter, and the rate of fuel then determines the displacement of a um, um, a, mag a, a vane with a magnet on it, and uh, that that is then the signal from that is then amplified by one of these. The more later ones, more later fuel flow uh, transmitters, but, but essentially use um, more complicated things with synchros and things like that. Um, and also, um, the later fuel flow indicators actually calculate the fuel used as well as um, uh, the rate of uh, the, the rate of fuel flow. But I think this one is it's only got sync two two connectors in that uh, two pins on that connector, and I assume it's. Um, it must be a very basic type of um, transmitter. What's also very interesting, if you look on the box here, we've got a what looks like an aircraft registration number, XA902, number one engine. And um, I did actually Google that registration, and it turns out this is actually from a Vulcan, a Vulcan bomber, which, is, which is, makes it probably quite collectible, I would imagine. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll Take the back off 
and um, go through it in a bit more, a bit more detail. Right, I've taken the unit out of the box, and uh, we can have a closer look at it now. So, as you can see, um, we've got loads of valves, and interesting to pack everything in. That opens up like that. And we've got more valves underneath, so it all folds back down. There's a trimmer or something there which just prevents it from, from it closing properly. But uh, anyway, moving round, we've got a that's a uh, 400 hertz transformer. One of the old Palmeco types by the, by the look of it. And uh, I had a look at these earlier on, and that there is a um, full wave rectifier valve, half wave rectifier valve actually. And uh, the one next to it, um, CV4048, is a uh, voltage regulator. And apparently, the, the take one of these screening caps off it. And there we go. The um, strike voltage on that is 115 volts, which fits with the system because it's all sort of it's all 115, 400 hertz, and it regulates at 85 volts. So we've got a voltage regulator. That's an, it's quite an unusual type, apparently. It'd be easier to leave that off. Um, so if you actually have a look underneath, most of the electronics are here, and got a few old uh, paper type capacitors here. I mean, these were very common in the 60s. If you have taken apart a vintage radio, they're usually full of these. The trimmer there, but you can see. Like all this old stuff, it's been meticulously put together. I mean, they must have spent hours putting all these all these individual components, and the way they're soldered as well, it's very high quality. Each individual component wrapped around a terminal. Um, if you ever try taking some of this stuff apart, um, it can be quite tricky. And that's over here. We've got. Just get out of the way of the light. That's the uh, undersurface of the transformer. And uh, I wasn't quite sure what this is. This, I think, is some sort of capacitor. Probably a mica capacitor or something. In a, in a resin. It's in a, it's in a resin case of some description. I've never seen one like that. If anybody else has any ideas what that might be, it's difficult to get a good view of it. There, that thing there, interesting. I presume it's some sort of very uh, stable capacitor, like a mica capacitor in a resin case. Okay. And similarly, more electronics on the on the back here. Most of these valves, incidentally. Virtually all these ones here that are, I took one of the caps off and took the caps off. They're all very similar. They're 12 AU7s, 12 AX7s, which, as anybody who's built audio stuff knows, is very popular. Um, audio amplifier valve. They're double triodes. Uh, nice, nice little valves actually. Very popular. Um, you can use them for all sorts of audio applications. But obviously, in this situation here, they are being used to. Uh, Amplify uh, some sort of input signal from the tra uh, fuel flow transmitter. Anyway, so what we'll do is we'll try and connect it up. Um, I had a look at this at the pinouts uh, before in more detail, and it seems that 28 volts goes to the heaters of the valves. Uh, they all seem to be wired in series. Uh, there, there is a 6.3 tap off the transformer, so some certainly most of the valves. Uh, using the 28 volts DC and uh, obviously the 115 
uh, 400 hertz input there. Um, I haven't got an indicator to test this on, so we'll just wire it up to the scope and see what we get. We'll put a sine wave into the into there and have a look, see what happens. I'll just show a closer look at the uh, the label there. So you can see this piece of equipment is made by Integral, and it's an 806A apparently. That's the type. Well, I think what we do is we try and put some power into it and uh, see what happens. Right, okay, <clears throat> I've got this um, unit connected up and I've got my homemade 400 hertz supply here, 115 volt 400 hertz uh, static inverter and uh, power supply there is giving our 24 volts for the heaters and got a, 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 a scope there. So I'm going to be feeding this uh, from the signal generator a something about 50 hertz to start off with uh, sine wave and um, see what happens. Um, this is all a bit of a, a guess really. I mean, I'm not even sure what the output of the of the fuel flow transmitter would be. I mean, I'm assuming it's because it's, most of these things have a magnet type thing it's going to be some sort of alternating current or voltage that this um, unit's going to be amplifying so um, let's see what happens I've got this oscilloscope probe and the only one that I can really get any info the only thing that I can really get anything out on at all let me just hold it on there So that's what I get, and I have been playing around this with this before. Um, it doesn't really vary at all with the frequency or amplitude of the signal. Um, so you can see by that waveform, it was a. Um, I've turned it off now, but you can see it was a. Uh, it's almost like um, uh, two uh, sine waves superimposed upon each other. Not quite sure what uh, what that is. Well, it's, the amplitude's about um, 200 volts. Whether it's enough, um, an alternating um, output, alternating current output to supply the actual indicator itself and then a further signal is used to drive it, I don't know. I think what I'm going to probably have to do with this is to um, see if I can find a fuel, a fuel flow indicator um, from a Vulcan or similar aircraft connect up and see if we can get it to work. I think this unit I think it more or less um, I think it probably does more or less work but it's very difficult to tell you know some of these capacitors here you know they're quite old um, paper capacitors you know they don't they don't age particularly well and this unit um, is basically the same age as me <laughs> 50 years old um, so uh, yeah, it's difficult to tell. You can see that little regulator there glowing away. Uh, difficult to tell whether the you know somewhere that whether the, some of these components are still um, viable after all that time. Um, so yeah, I think we'll see if we can we'll, we'll we'll keep it, and then if we can find a uh, uh, an indicator, test it again, and see if we can get any sense out of it. Um, but if anybody has any other bright ideas, see if we can get the thing to work. You know, leave a message and. Let's see if we can sort it out, but uh, nice little piece of uh, 50s aeronautical engineering uh, or electronic uh, aeronautical electronic engineering um, probably does have some uh, sentimental value being from a Vulcan. Okay, thank you very much.